Welcome back um, to day one with our DUI virtual trade show. Um, our next session is actually on how to measure uh, for a dry suit. Um, at the same time, we will have a breakout room uh, for anyone who is interested in being a DUI dealer, um, or if you just have general dealer type questions, um, please message me directly and I will put you into that breakout room with Tor. Uh, so with that, um, we are up next with Jay. Uh, let me see, get Jay up there. Um, so we'll get Jay going. Uh, oh, and with Mira <laughs> and Dan all in the same room. Uh, so, so Jay will be going over how to measure. Um, and if you have uh, a dry suit measuring form, he will be going through that. Um, it's not required when you're going through this whole session um, uh, as this session is being recorded and it will be available on Facebook Live. Um, and also later on, we will post this again on our YouTube channel. Um, as with all these presentations, they'll be posted there. Um, so if you have questions throughout this, please message me um, and we will ask those questions of Jay um, or Dan or Mira, who's in the room. Um, what it's like to be measured, <laughs> um, stuff like that. Anyways, so with that, um, Jay, uh, I'm going to hand this over to you. And again, remember, if you are wanting to be part of the, the DUI dealer uh, breakout room, please message me. Jay? Okay. <clears throat> Good afternoon, everybody. I'm back. We're going to go over here and go over some measuring. Uh, Jack is going to help me out a little bit with the PowerPoint, so we're going to kind of be going back and forth. Uh, switching some cameras on allowing you to help you guys show you how, how DUI measures and what measurements that we take a look at um, in relationship to how we actually build our suits and what we actually put input into the system. So <clears throat> one of the things that we got to do is if we're doing a signature suit or a custom suit, <clears throat> what we want to be able to do is we go over the 20 point measurements. Okay, so what we're going to do is basically walk you through um, walk you through all the types of different types of measurements. Sometimes we'll get measurements off select suits if we want to get an idea of what's the best size, uh, best size suit to fit you in. Um, however, if we're building a signature suit, we do go strictly off of it. And I'm going to show you how to take, go through the order form as well. I do believe the order forms are now online. Um, I apologize if my voice seems a little muffled. Um, as we've got three or four people in the world, we are masking up. So uh, if my, uh, please let me know if I need to drop my mask or see if I can figure something out to be a little bit more articulate. Um, but we're going to try to go ahead and take you through this step by step. We can um, hear you just fine, Jay. So you're you good. Know, can? Sweet. Yep. It sounds muffled in my own head. I don't know why, but um, it just doesn't sound like me, I guess. Yeah. Don't listen to the internal voices, Jay. It's hard to turn off sometimes, man. All right. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and show you I'm going to walk you through uh, with Mira on how to measure the suit or how, how to measure for a suit. What Mira doesn't realize right now is he's actually purchasing the suit later down the road <laughs> <laughs> after he gets certified. So now he's second guessing volunteering. So anyway, uh, Mira, do you want to take 30 seconds or just introduce uh, yourself real quick? Or do you... So Jay, can you uh, first, uh, sorry, I'm supposed, I forgot I was supposed to be running the PowerPoint presentation part of it. Yeah, I was kind of going blind right there real quick. Sorry, okay. that was my fault. It's, I can improvise. That's all right. No worries. So sizing and measuring. So what are the objectives here? So now I'm going back through my PowerPoint, guys. Um, the objective is to be able to assess the needs of your customer, determine the customer whether it needs a signature or a select suit. Um, and then really at the end, we're going to talk about how to evaluate the fit of the suit, uh, which is really a, key, really a key component after we make it once you receive the suit. So moving on from the objectives, uh, we're going to talk about I'm going to go through the order forms for select sizes. I believe I talked about this a little bit when I was talking about premium suits. Uh, we have 15 standard sizes for men, 18 for women. What's the difference between a select series and a signature? Well, it's really what's, what type of suit is going to fit you very well or what's going to sit, fit you perfectly. When I look at the measuring, and before we kind of go into too much of the, too much of the actual measuring, when I look at the measurements for a suit and a dealer or a customer asks me if they're better off in a select or a signature, I look at the overall measurements, but the first thing we do is we start with like the chest, waist, and the hips, because that's our upper torso and that's where we breathe. 
once we've got that established, then I'll work at the length. One thing I don't want to see is a whole lot of extra room when we talk about sizing and measuring people. Uh, this is kind of the instructor in me. This is kind of the diver in me. If I see somebody who may, and you know, we're all different body types, but let's say they're a two to three XL, but they've got a 31 in, inch seam, their Florida crotch, they're going to be carrying a three to four or more extra inches in their legs that they, we want to be able to, or I would like to see them manage better. Okay, we want to be able to make sure they can manage the air cell because anybody who's dove a dry suit knows that when you go to depth, you got to let air in to take the squeeze off, but you still got to manage that air compression within the suit. So measuring is really a very key element into purchasing the actual dry suit and knowing where you fit within the line. From that, we'll go through the order form and you can pick your colors. We can pick your zip seals, your patterns, and we'll go into that a little bit more. But uh, for right now, I just kind of want to go through the starting of the measuring. So uh, next slide is just kind of a quick brief of uh, what our ordering looks like. Uh, our order forms looks like they are online. Um, we do have different order forms for different suits. We have a public safety order form. We have one for uh, the premium suits. We have one for the CF200 suits. Um, and then we have also the, uh, the standard fabric suits as well. So we have different order forms with different configurations. Most of it is relatively similar, uh, but there are a few little tweaks. So uh, please, Kind of identify what suit you want before you start filling out the form. One of the important things is when you're filling out the form, it's the order forms are not universal because not all options are available. So if you're putting together a an order for one of the standard suits, that order form will have the options that are available only for the uh, standard suit. Uh, and so you don't want to kind of mix and match um, like or using the standard order form for a TLS 350, for example. Um, you're just not gonna get all the same options on that order form, you're gonna get confused. So use the form that's appropriate for each one. Correct. All right, so when fitting for uh, the DUI suit, we wanna make sure we get some of the basic stab. We also wanna make sure we get some of the major, uh, take care of some of the major measurements. One thing that I have to go over with people is, we just want you wearing normal clothes. I mean, I don't want you wearing a sweatshirt or anything like that, but jeans and a t-shirt. Uh, we'll talk about the hip measurement about not having anything in your pockets, but you don't need to wear bulky clothes, uh, but you also don't need to, you know, the measurement t-shirt, regular shirts, fine, pair of slacks are fine. Um, not anything too bulky. And obviously you don't need to be measured in a bathing suit. We're actually just looking for some basic measurements. Some of the key measurements that we're gonna talk about, and I'll go a little bit more in depth as we go through the measurements, Armhole is a big one. Chest, waist, and hips. Chest, that's where we breathe. The last thing you want is to have that suit too tight in the arm or in the chest area and be struggling breathing. Okay, anybody who dies, you want to know that when you're diving and you're breathing, you want to breathe effortlessly. You want to breathe like you're normally sitting in a chair or you are on land. You don't want to have to be uh, forcing it. And that's one of the reasons why we take very close attention to the chest and the waist, because uh, that's where we breathe. The hips is a big one simply because we want to make sure we got enough room in the hips, but also the front entry suits. All of our suits, well, I shouldn't say all of our suits. We do have a back entry suit, um, but most of our suits are front entry suits. That's probably 99% of what people order, and you have to step into that. So when you step into it, you've got to be able to get that suit over your hips. So that kind of makes sense. Uh, the calf, crotch to floor, girth, spine, uh, we'll talk about those as we go through. As we go through. All right, so Mara, you ready? All right, so do me a favor. One of the key things that when we measure somebody is, first of all, I like to measure from either the side. So as you can see, I'm standing to the side of them, or I'll come back behind him. Okay. Guys, girl, dealers, girls, um, do me a favor. One of the things about measuring somebody is a very personal experience, okay? It's a very... Um, in, in, in interaction and a lot of people tend to be a little bit hesitant getting married or have a little uneasy feeling when they're getting measured. So coming from the side, coming from the back, talking to them, talking to your customer, talking to uh, your dealers and making them feel more comfortable when you're getting measured is a very key element to this whole process. That's one of the reasons why I like coming in from the side or coming from behind. I also take time to tell the person I'm measuring, what measurement and why, so they understand exactly what I'm doing. 
There's going to be a reason for that, which we'll get to in a second. You'll, I think everybody will pretty much understand that. But the biggest thing is, is I want Mara or whoever I'm measuring to feel comfortable. So when I start to go do the measure of the head, we're going to measure the broadest part of the actual head. So I'm going to take the tent measure and go right above your forehead. By the way, Mara, I'm going to poke you in, do a bunch of stuff. Okay. So measure right around the forehead. And I'm going to bring it straight across. The one thing you want to make sure you do is you want to make sure the tape measure is, in fact, even. In other words, you don't want it on some weird angle. And right here, you're going to see mirrors right about 23. You got that on the phone? Sweet. Okay, the second measurement is going to be the neck measurement. All right, I'm going to come right around the base of the neck. And I'm going to get 17 right there maybe even 17 and a half. Okay. Now this measurement will be key when you go to measure or trim up your zip seal, uh, your silicone seal, because they all have rings. And depending on what the size of your neck kind of gives you a indication or an area to start with when trimming up your neck seals. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go over the wrist, the forearm and the biceps. This is where I want the person who's getting measured to be relaxed calm, arms just naturally draped to a side. And he's just gonna stand there and look straight forward. I'm gonna come in from the side. When I measure from the wrist, I'm going right over there at the joint, right at the wrist bone. And I get seven and a quarter. Okay. The forearm, I'm gonna move up to the forearm and I'm actually gonna go a little bit just below the elbow. So I get 12. The reason so, I'm coming... so, so Jay, don't forget that I'm trying to show the screens. So sometimes you're going a little quick for me. Okay, so one of the things, the reason I'm going a little bit higher up is we always want to measure at the broadest part of the forearm or the bicep and the tricep. So right now I've got the broadest part of his forearm and I'm getting 12. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing. The next measurement, which I believe is the bicep, even though this is the bicep, we wanna measure the tricep too because it's the circumference. So I'm actually gonna get a little higher up, right underneath his arm. And as you can wear it, so he's wearing a t-shirt, which is fine. And right now, Mara's got 15 and, 15 and a half inch biceps. Maybe 15 and a quarter. I'll give you 15 and a half, buddy. All right. So, but you'll notice how I'm coming in from the side. Okay. And I'm also taking, I'm not pinching it too much. I'm not adding a couple extra fingers. I'm actually just kind of trying to remove my fingers partially so you guys can see where it's on the tape measure. The other part of me is, is I don't want to get a finger or two finger here because that can offset the measurements off just a little bit. The biggest thing you want to make sure of is I'm going to measure this forearm again just so you see it. We want to make sure the tape measure is even all the way around. Okay. Now, one of the next key measurements is actually going to be the armhole. All right. This is one of those measurements that's a little bit tricky. And when a lot of people call into DUI dealers or, or um, other individuals asking me, you know, questions about the armhole, most of the time is dealers. Um, you know, it's one of those measurements that we just need to get right. And it's a little tricky to measurement. And there can be a lot of mistakes here. If there's some mistake that's made, then unfortunately it could be pretty drastic and have dramatic effects on the suit. What I'm gonna have Merritt do is he's gonna take his arm, put straight out on a 90 degree angle from his torso. What I like to do is I like to take my fingers, find the, uh, find the uh, little center part of his deltoid and his shoulder, a little dimple, and I'll put the tape measure on the, just on the inside of my finger. Can you see that there? Let me change fingers. Okay, I'm going to then hold the tape measure. Now I'm going to bring it underneath this arm, but notice how I've got my hand on the tape measure. All right, I'm not gripping it. There's a reason for this. Okay, go ahead and lower your arm underneath mine. You notice how that tape measure moved up? That slack is something we need to account for when we make the that when we check the arm hole. This is a circumference measurement. And as of right now, I got to stand on my tippy toes because Mary's kind of tall. I'm getting 24 and a quarter on that arm hole.
again, it's very important that you start out with the arm straight out and then you have them lower your arm. For example, if you straight out, we got 24 and a half. If I go right here, that's not it. That is an example of what not to do. I want, to, I want you to be able to find the center spot. I'm gonna do this again. And I'm doing this again because I want you guys to really understand how we're doing this. I'm gonna keep it slack. Go ahead and lower. That allows the tape measure to move. I'm gonna come right back up and I'm getting the same measure, 24 and three quarters, 24 and a half. Okay, if this measurement's wrong, it affects how you can reach your valves. If you're, if you're, if you're diving doubles and you gotta reach back and grab your valves, your exhaust valve or any clips, that's, that's one of the reasons why this is one of the very key measurements that we need to make sure we get right. Okay, next, what's, uh, what's that through arm hole? Chest, okay. So when we're doing, when we're measuring for chest, we always want to make sure that we're measuring the broadest part. Whether it's male or females, you always want to be able to measure the, the broadest or the widest part. Especially when you're, I will always take this measurement from behind and I'm going to do it a certain way. And I'm mainly doing it a certain way for the women, because this is one of those things where you, you just, you need to be respectful. You need to explain to them what you're doing and why you're doing it. And what I like to do is go ahead and have the driver put both arms out. I am going to take my tape measure and I'm just going to hand it to him underneath his arm. Go ahead and take your tape measure, hold on to it. I'm going to reach out with the other arm and hand me the tape measure. Okay. Now, what I want you to do is take the tape measure yourself and put it on the broadest part of your chest. And then, by the way, take a step forward so Dan can get back here in a second. Okay, go ahead and lower your arms. Okay. Now, the first thing to do once I've pinched this, the, the tape measure, the one thing I want to do, and this is very key, is this, uh, especially when talking to guys or even especially girls, you want to let them know, I need to make sure this tape measure is level. So I like to inform, especially women, of what I'm doing and why I'm looking at this tape measure to make sure it is going straight across. If it's, if it's on an angle, I'm not going to get the correct measurement. So now I'm also going to do one other key thing, and that is I'm going to let him take a couple normal breaths what I want is I want Mira when I'm taking these measurements to be relaxed. I want him to be standing normally. It is natural for anyone, especially, you know, to want to suck in their stomachs, to want to puff up their chest really big, um, you know, definitely suck in their stomachs. They all want to do that. The problem with that is our suits fit you very, on a signature suit, fit you very precise. So that little bit could change the way the suit feels when you're diving. So we need to get accurate measurements here. So right now, Mira's coming in right about a 46 to 46 and a quarter inch chest. From here, I am gonna let him take the tape measure and we are gonna to go to the waist measurement. I am going to let Mira take the tape measure. He is gonna put it on his belly button himself. So go ahead and take the tape measure, put it on your belly button. And I'm gonna do the exact same thing. Go ahead and relax. Usually we go off the belly button, mainly because it's the broadest part of the stomach, okay? I wear a 34 inch pant, I don't care. Get a waist measurement. You're the, your pant size doesn't have anything to do with this. I'm getting 44. I'm also gonna look in front, sorry, Dan. I'm gonna right. come over here, look in front, and I'm gonna make sure that this tape measure is completely on an angle. If it's down like this, it's not an accurate measurement. And I'm getting 44. So does that make sense to everybody? All right. Get the back shot. Okay. So once we've done the hips, then we're gonna to get to the hips and we're gonna work our way down. The first rule in taking a hip measurement, take everything out of your pockets. If you have your billfold in there, if you have your cell phone, your car keys, all of that's no good, okay? We want to make sure there's nothing in the pocket. Jeans are fine to get measured in, but we want to make sure there isn't a billfold in the back pocket, the side pocket. See, I caught them. Want to make sure that everything is uh, completely out of his pockets. So Jay, Jay, real quick question. Um, what should people be wearing when they get measured? Uh, T-shirt, shorts, jeans, a collared shirt. Um, I don't want to see anybody you know, like the way I'm dressed right now is fine. The way Mira's dressed is fine. Um, I don't want to see, I'm going to back up for a second.
This is probably too much insulation. I'd rather see a t-shirt or a regular thin type shirt. Having something that's a little thicker, like a jacket or a fleece pullover, isn't going to do anybody any good and the measurements are going to be off. Is that fair? Yep. Cool. All right. So the next measurement I'm going to do is the hip measurement. What I'm going to do is I'm coming in from the side. Obviously, you don't want to be right behind them or in front of them on this one. I'm actually going to get that on one knee because it's easier for me to get the measurement. I'm going to take the tape measure. I'm going to come right around the waist. And then I'm going to lower it down to his hip or the center part of his buttocks and take my measurement right there. I'm also going to make sure that the tape measure is even all the way around. And I'll see, I'm going to move my fingers here so Dan can get a shot of that. We're looking at 44 and a quarter on the hip. Okay, next measurement is the thigh. Again, you want to be on the broadest part of the thigh, so it's going to be kind of a, a little bit higher up on the quad. And I'm getting 25. But you can see, because I'm so higher up on this measurement, you can see we're having things in this pocket would really offset this. Okay, next measurement, the calf. I always, especially if they're wearing jeans or slacks, a lot of times I'll kind of put my hand there, right there to actually see if I can find the widest part of his calf. And then I'm just gonna bring the tape measure right around there and I'm gonna get uh, 17. Okay, all right. In the next couple of measurements, we actually need Mira to take off his shoes. Both of them? Both of them. Hang on. Uh, okay. Are you with me, Jack? Okay. So the next measurement is going to be the knee to floor. What I like to do to get the knee to floor measurement is I'm actually going to have Mara bend his knee. I'm going to find the joint. And then I'm going to have him straighten out his knee. So go ahead and straighten out both knees. Now he's standing just very straight. His uh, legs are shoulder width. I'm going to take my tape measure, put it right there on the side, and I'm going to come straight down to the floor. And try to get out of the way of the camera. And I am right there at 20 and three quarters. Okay. So that's the knee to floor. I like to have them bend their knee because sometimes, especially when they're wearing pants, um, edema, or for whatever reason, sometimes it's hard to find the knee joint. So I'll just take my fingers and just find that kneecap. When they bend their knee, I know exactly where that bend is. And then I can drop my tape measure. Okay, so what's the next one? The next one is gonna be crotch to floor. This is a very critical measurement, everybody. Uh, and it's one that you're actually gonna have the diver who's getting measured. You're actually gonna have them help you out with this. It'll make sense in a second. Okay, so one of the first things we wanna be able to do is I'm gonna take the tape measure. I'm gonna show the person getting measured how I want them to hold the measure. I'm gonna take my fingers flat. I'm gonna put the tape measure in there and keep it flush. Notice how it's, it's right there on the palm of my hand, okay? I'm gonna have Mira, instructor, put it in between his legs all the way up as high as he can go and then he's going to look straight ahead. Now, this is key, guys. It is natural tendency for everybody to look down for obvious reasons, okay? What are you doing down there? You need the diver to look straight. If I look down, I have now lost an inch to an inch and a half, if not more, just in the length of that measurement. And that'll make sense in a second. So what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have Mara hold the hand. Go ahead and put that in between your fingertips. Lower it down a little bit more. There you go. Okay, and you're going to put it in between your legs with your legs parallel straight down from floor length. Put it right behind and right behind everything and get it right up all the way as far as you can go. Now you were going to look straight ahead. I'm going to be down here on the side. Let me get to the other side so it's easier for Dan to see. I am then going to take the tape measure, go straight down. Once I've got my measurement, I'm going to pause for a second and I'm going to look up to make sure Mara's looking straight ahead. 
And now I got a 32, 32 inch measurement. The length of the pants, well, your inseam doesn't count. All right, if you wear a 34, 30 jean, that doesn't help me out. We actually need the measurements. Okay, so Florida crotch is a key one, but as you can see, it's a very personal one. So again, communicate with the diver, communicate with your customer if you're a dealer. Under, let them understand and know what you're doing and more importantly, why, okay? So after we do Florida crotch, we're gonna do the girth measurement. The girth measurement, how I like to do the girth is go ahead and stand normal, arm down. I'm gonna come in between the legs down right around the kneecaps. I'm gonna come straight up. And the girth measurement is exactly it. It is a circumference measurement of the upper torso. So I wanna make sure the tape measure goes all the way up around the stomach. Let them take a couple of breaths and then I'm gonna hold the tape measure here. You wanna make sure that this tape measure is on the outside. For guys that have bellies, you don't want to, eat. this does not work, okay? You're gonna get a suit, if you do this and I take this measurement, that's gonna be a suit that does not fit. You need to make sure that it goes over the circumference and you've got a nice good there fit there. And if you wanna do me a favor, Mara, face the Yukon too, so Dan can get a shot of the measurement. No, face. Oh, Jack, can you switch the phone? Okay. Hold on, hold on. That's from the side. Yeah. And then I want to go from the front. Okay. Okay. So that's the girth measurement. Okay, give me a favor, face the television. Okay, so now that we've covered the girth measurement, what's the next one on our foot? This is going to be shoulder to floor. So I'm going to come behind Mara. I'm going to have Mara face the window. And what I like to do when I'm taking the measurement, let's find out which side of the tape measure I want to start with. Top part of the shoulder, or actually what I'll do is I'll move my finger in and just go right to his uh, spine, right at the top part of his traps or his shoulders. I'm going to then take my tape measure, slide it right underneath my finger, take my thumb, straight down to the small, to the small or small of his back. I'm going to hold, my, I'm going to switch hands, and I'm going to go straight down to the floor, and I get 62 and a half, 62 and three quarters. So Jay, can you do that without doing the intermediate stop if you have a longer reach? Depends on how long your arms are. I would say no. Because <laughs> well, and I'll well you, you got short arms. <laughs> I'm not making it, dude. <laughs> kind of, barely there. So it can be done, but it's kind of it's kind of difficult and it's definitely a stretch. You just wanted me to do that, didn't you? Yep. Yeah. All right. So after we do this uh, shoulder to floor, we're going to do this shoulder to width. This one is a little bit tricky. Shoulder to width is not shoulder bone to shoulder bone. What I want to do is I want to take the tape measure and do about an inch right as the curvature of his arm comes out, because you will notice his arm goes out a little bit. Because of that bone out a little bit, I may actually come down a little bit to, to take that into account. I'm then gonna go across over the shoulders, over the traps, and I'm gonna come back down the other side. And I'm getting 24 and a half. Okay. Next measurement is going to be spine to wrist. Go ahead and take your arm and put it straight out like on a 90 degree angle. From spine to wrist, I'm going to take the tape measure, put it right there in the spine, right there in the center. And I'm going to go straight out to his wrist bone. And his wrist bone is where I'm going to take the measurement. So it looks like we're at, what, that 29, 30? Where's his bone? Right there, 30 and a quarter. Okay. Okay, go ahead and relax. Okay, so then the next thing, you can relax now. Next couple of things that, you know, is there's kind of up to the dealer. Unless you put them on a scale, 
You're going to ask them how much they weigh. Uh, you're going to ask them what their shoe size is. Please do not give me the flip flop, okay? Or a loafer. A normal gym size will do. If I wear a ten gym shoe, that's the that's the that's the number I want to give the guy measuring me. I wear a ten gym shoe. You wear a ten max. I understand different shoes fit differently. They have different widths, and you know I'm not going to wear the same as same size shoe as I do in a flip flop or a loafer versus a gym shoe which is why I'm stating this for the reason why I'm stating it. We want to be able to just go off of the normal gym shoe. Weight, okay, you're never going to probably get 100% accurate on the weight. Um, I have had a couple of dealers actually weigh their customers, but not really that necessary. Um, you know, just have them give them an idea of what, where they're weighing in, weighing in at, and kind of understand that you're probably not going to get the most accurate answer. Um, and then height, you know, guys, we're always going to have, you know, average up a little bit higher. So, uh, but you can kind of get a good idea. So we just kind of want to get an idea of how tall you are, what the weight is and what your shoe size is um, when we're measuring. Okay. So filling out the rest of the order form. Once we've got the order form filled out or we got all of our measurements, you know, uh, Tor mentioned this in his, uh, in his presentations with insulation. If it's a signature suit, we are going to be able to size the suit based on the, the maximum or the thickest insulation you're possibly going to have. So for number three in insulation where it says size, I've got three, I've got three or four options. Maximum dual therm, which is a 300 gram weight, 450, which is a 450 gram weight, and then more than 450, or tell me what you're wearing. If you're wearing fourth element, if you're wearing another brand, let me know. I can do the conversion and come up with an idea of how thick it is. Okay. So, but knowing that is known is knowing how well that suit's going to fit. To give you a quick idea of how well our suits are our fit, if I size a suit for Mira in a 300 and he decides the next year he's going to be diving in some really cold weather and wants to switch to a 450, there are chances that suit may not fit. It will definitely be tighter on him. And if it's tighter, now you got to reach the valves, right? You know, you got to be able to, you know, make all those movements. And if you can't do that, it's an issue. So, you know, usually what I do when I talk about sizing and measuring is, Mara, what's the thickest insulation you're going to be wearing? You may not know. Okay, rephrase the question. What's the coldest water you think you'll ever be diving in? We can make the conversions. The dealer should know, be able to do the conversions as well or who you're talking to. Um, and you as your own diver, if you're on Facebook and you're just kind of watching us, you know the coldest water you're actually going to be diving in as well. So those are things that you can kind of make that determination. Uh, four, my flex or rubber hose. Uh, you get to choose what kind of inflation hose you have. Uh, rock boots, turbo boot, ultra flex, a turbo tech, just kind of going through the form here a little bit. Um, you can choose which size, what, what kind of boots that you choose on your suit. After that, we're kind of starting to look at over, overlay and pattern designs. This is where we're going to be kind of optimizing your dry suit. Uh, you're going to be able to pick the color, pick the overlay, the pattern. We have the Pro, the Elite, or the Pro Stripe. This is the Pro. Stripe comes down the side. Hold on. Yep. Jack, can you get the phone? Stripe. Yeah, and then that's the Pro Stripe. And the only difference between the Pro Stripe and the Pro is without the stripes. Then we have the Elite, where the pattern does not come down the sleeve, but it's still an upper body design. We have Elite piping, which highlights. And this is where on the order form, you would be able to choose which colors you want, which patterns you have. Uh, this suit is obviously dog paws with the, with the uh, purple piping. Uh, so you can kind of start to figure out this out and kind of tell us what you want to be done. Uh, you get to tell us what type of wrist seals, neck seals, do you want latex, attached, silicone, uh, however you want. Um, section nine, we have accessory packages. We can do anything you want a la carte. We kind of put these in packages just for pricing points, uh, which actually saves you a little bit of money if you want two pockets instead of paying for a two pockets a la carte. We can actually put it in a, in, a, in, a, in like a sports package and kind of save some money there. Um, but you do have your choice once you get into the pockets and the packages. You have the opportunity to choose cargo, zipper, 
uh, knee pads, CF200 or Armed. Uh, if you wanted a knee overlay, which we don't have any suits over here, but the knee overlay would be uh, something that covered uh, covered the lower part of the shin. Uh, do you want a P valve? Uh, you know, these are all options as you start to fill out the form. You're actually going into building your own suit. Um, if you saw my presentation earlier this morning, we talked a little bit about you know making that suit to your specifications, making that suit to fit your style of diving. This is where all those items come in your pockets, your P-valve, your zipper, um, your silicone seals, warm neck hood, additional accessories. We've got 11 mil, we got a seven mil, we got shorts, we got um, you know bibs. We've got all different types of accessories, zip gloves, all those kind of things we can kind of start to add and start to put together to build your own suit. So that's the order form. Um, we've gone through the measuring, the rest of it's just kind of, you know, building all the specifications you want. Um, the whole idea about this presentation, though, was just so you guys have a better understanding of the measuring and how we take those measurements, incorporate that to building your suit. Uh, and Jack, where are we at? A couple questions. Um, yeah, the first question is if someone's getting aftermarket uh, wrist rings and add-ons like that. So there's there's some on the market that take up extra space. Um, should the person measuring automatically remove that from the measurement or should they no, put that? Just tell us. Hey, okay. if, you're, if you're putting together like a uh, side tech ring system, take that measurement and just let us know that. We will make the conversion for you. If, and I think Jack, I think you had a couple customers like this, um, where there is or there are a couple of specific systems out there where they know how short they want their uh, arm seals to be or the wrists. Let us know how much to take that up as far as inches. What our production team will do is they'll take that measurement and let's say you need an extra two inches. Say, hey, I'm using XYZ system. Please remove two inches from the spine to wrist or whatever. Um, so right. usually that's how we tackle it. I want the measurements to be accurate the way we do the measurements. We can work from that set. All these measurements, these 20 points right here, which camera am I looking at? No. This one, all these measurements right here, that is completely looks like it's whited out because of the reflection. That's our base model. That's our foundation. We right. build the suits off of that foundation. Right. So the important thing is for everyone to know is give us real measurements. Don't make adjustments based on what you think it should be. So it, uh, some of the classic examples are um, I had another dry suit from another manufacturer. The legs were too long. So when we gave you the measurements, I automatically removed four inches. Well, that was four inches off the other manufacturer suit. Ours is custom built to that person. So always give the real measurements. Yeah. Um, if it's something that you, a personal preference that you like, let's say um, you are a diver that wants the extra shorter sleeve, still give us the real arm measurement. And then in the notes on the order form, always write down, please remove two inches or two inches shorter on the sleeves. Or if you have one of those custom ring systems, it could be three inches shorter. Uh, so just to go back and, and touch on, on how the measurement, we need to have these as, um, as real life measurements um, and, and normal street clothes, so to speak. Um, how do we accommodate for the different um, thicknesses of undergarments. I mean, we know our thicknesses of our undergarments, but if someone has another manufacturer's undergarments, um, what should they do? Uh, well, first of all, tell us what they are, because chances are, you know, we're all in the industry. We kind of have an idea of what it is. Fourth element, I know what to make. Um, you know, I think there's a Weezer and there's a couple other brands out there that we kind of know that it's a 300 gram weight, a 450 gram weight, a 250. We kind of have an idea. If I don't know, and here's the key to this, if I don't know or I'm not familiar with it, I'm going to call you and ask. Um, if I've got a customer and I'm not familiar with what they're wearing on installation, I'm going to kind of just ask how thick is it? And when I say how thick is it, is it 300 gram? Is it 450 gram? If you're still not sure, then I can do two things. One is tell me the, how cold the water you're diving in and how are, are you getting cold? If you're diving in say 60 degree water, you're probably not wearing a 450 because you're gonna be hot. I could be wrong on that though. Okay, so everybody's got their different thresholds, but I can kind of get an idea of, of knowing what kind of cold water you're diving in 
to knowing what kind of insul DUI's insulation you would need to stay warm. But again, I'm making an educated guess on that and it's not accurate. It's better for you to actually tell me what you're wearing and get and know it. Um, if you can call customer service or if you can call whoever the manufacturer is who for you by translation and get that information for me. Those are all key, uh, key factors that would make me make a much better accurate decision. If you are ordering and you're giving me measurements because you're looking at a select suit, meaning a large tall, large, large short, all of our suits are going to be sized for the 450 gram suit. So that's actually a little easier to make that determination. Jack, yeah, I can't hear you. Um, so I know our, our our select suits are sized for an XM450 um, thickness wise. Um, and you had mentioned earlier that um, if you get a suit size for the Duotherm 300, then later on you go to an XM450, um, that will be too tight to dive. Um, just as a, a note from my perspective, um, having the ability to add undergarments needed um, is still very doable. Um, I, I dive anywhere because I've <laughs> I brought my dry suit to the Bahamas. Um, I wore just a base layer. I use that same suit in San Diego and dive the 150. And sometimes, uh, yes, I do dive the dual Therm 300 if I'm doing a longer technical dive. I did get the suit um, size for the XM450 because I personally like the looser fit. Um, so that's important as a person when you're ordering your suit, how do you like your, your clothes to fit, so to speak? I see Mira, he has the skinny jeans. He likes the, <laughs> the nice tight fit. I prefer shorts and oh, big Stop. bag. <laughs> Sorry, Mira, throwing you under the bus there. Uh, <laughs> but be aware that you want to get the suit customized to the point where it's comfortable for you. But if you are going for a tighter fitting suit, be aware that the material does not stretch. Um, so it will potentially restrict your movements. Right. Yeah, it's, 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 it's very rare to be able to, uh, if we size it, um, you know, if I size something for the 300 and they put the 450, is it possible that it can be done? Yes, but the suit's gonna fit a lot more snug than you probably are used to or wanting it to. Um, and I have seen situations where the person literally couldn't get the suit on just by making that switch. So I always caution everybody about going up. Jack, you're exactly right. You can always take clothing off or you can always take downsize the size of your insulation and you can still dive the suit. So when we measure the suit, what's the coldest water you're going to be in? Plan ahead. If you've got Iceland or the Arctic on your bucket list, and you don't want to have to buy a new suit, you might want to plan for that, even though that may be three years down the road. Okay, when you're ordering the suit. So the suit is an investment and you kind of want to take that into consideration. Uh, again, this comes back to my original presentation on premium suits where we're talking about profiling the customer, understanding what kind of diver you are and understanding where you want to go. And part of it, knowing your insulation and your insulation package is part of that because you're going to know what kind of, what the temperature of the water is. We want to keep you warm. That's the whole idea behind this. Okay, so... Uh, before I go into part two of the presentation, are there any other questions on sizing? No? Okay, so part two. Uh, touch a little bit on the second part of the presentation, and that is after you get the suit back. Okay, so once you've received your suit and you're trying it on, the first thing I want you to do is bring your insulation with you if you, if you already have it. Um, but I want you to try the suit on with the insulation. Trying the suit on in a pair of jeans or what you're wearing throughout the day, or if you're just coming off of work in a business suit or anything like that, it's not going to work. I want you in the exact same insulation that you're going to be diving the suit, and then I want you to be able to check for fit. What I mean by that is I want you to be able to reach your valves. Your exhaust valve, that's a key one. Be able to reach back if you're a tech diver and grab your valves if you're wearing doubles. Um, I want you to do a couple of different things to stretch to make sure the suit fits fits. One of the things is I'm going to pull this chair over is fabric suits do not stretch. So there's going to be a little extra material in the leg to allow for a removement. You're going to want to take your, your leg, put it up on the chair, and you're going to kind of lean into it. 
So you can test to make sure that you've got movement. Why does that happen? Well, it makes sense if you think about it. If you're out getting on a dive boat, you got to get up a dive ladder. If you can't get your leg up, you're going to have problems getting back on the boat. Okay. So I want you to check out the full range of motions. I want you to be able to reach your valves, make sure it fits fine, uh, and you're comfortable before you dive the suit. And I like to have some dive shop or have someone there to evaluate it and do that right then and there when we deliver the suit. Uh, it also helps to get the zip seals. We'll cut the seals and do all that stuff right there first. So conduct a range of motion test. Remember fabric suits, again, um, they need excess material. Uh, so we actually build that into the pattern. Um, while the crushed neoprenes are kind of designed to fit more snugly, uh, snugly, <laughs> uh, a little more snug. Like I said in my uh, premium presentation, the CF200 has got some stretch to it. So you can still have some maneuverability within the CF200 um, and still have a little bit more snug where you're not going to get that kind of flexibility in a fabric suit. Uh, Cadora does not stretch, guys. It just it doesn't. So, so check the uh, shoulders. Make sure they're not too snug. Uh, check the spine to wrist to make sure your arms aren't too short. Forearms may be too tight. So you want to make sure that the arms and everything fit okay and you've got full range of motion. Um, and, above, and then move your arms above your arms like you're going to reach for the valves. So those are all kind of movements that you can do to make sure that you can actually maneuver within the suit. Uh, checking, the mo checking the motion of the lower, lower body, I kind of already went through that with the whole knees. Um, you know, if, if there's anything you need to address uh, with the dive shop or with us, now's the time to do it, not six months later after you've been diving it for three months. Okay, I want to know if the suit doesn't fit right off the bat. So please, ad addressing fitting concerns, we want to do that. Uh, we want to do that right away. We don't want to wait six months, this or that. So, um, and that's for the signature suit. And that's for the signature suit, right? So, you know, we want to make sure that we, get a, oh, we may have to address some problems, some problems there if the signature suit doesn't fit. Um, other than that, just be kind of aware there might be some excess material in the legs and in the arms, but that's there to allow for new mobility. Okay. Um, other than that, addressing fit concerns, call DUI within 30 days. Most common problems are kind of the arms and the legs uh, are slightly too long or too short. So the boots are the wrong size. Those are little things that we can tweak. Um, again, these measurements are the foundation. So we are building the suit off of the measurements you give us, which is why getting those key measurements are so key to actually designing your suit. like to point out just as a, a general thing is you got to remember you know if you're a dry suit is not like your everyday clothes that you're wearing around um, when you put this on you do need like Jay said to put on your undergarments to try it on um, it will not be form-fitting like a wetsuit it's designed to have movement um, like Jay said if you can't reach your valves it's not a functioning dry suit Okay, so if you get, get it, so it, it's form fitting and it looks awesome, like you're modeling something on the runway, it's not a functional diving suit at that point in time. So be aware that it's not your everyday clothes when you get this back. Okay, um, so Jay, I don't have any other questions at this time, and I want to give you a little bit of break before um, our next presentation, which is public safety, uh, which will start at two o'clock. Um, so I'd like to thank you for, for, uh, going over all the measurements with that. Um, so I'd like everyone to, to check back in a few minutes and we'll go over, uh, public safety with that Jay will be presenting. I'll be back. And so during that time, 